I sat down with Chris Piasecki, a data integrations expert, because I wanted to know how do I work with really large volumes of data? I know that Power BI connects to Dataverse, but what are these other tools? In this interview, we're gonna dive into the nuances of Azure Synapse Link versus Fabric, which one to go with where, but to truly understand what he's gonna share, we need to step back and look at why connecting Power BI to Dataverse directly isn't enough. When most people think of connecting to Dataverse, they think it's some API in the background. And that's mostly true. I mean, in Power Automate, whenever we're doing any of these Dataverse actions, we're hitting the API. When you're using this connector, what you're actually using is the TDS tabular data stream. It's a specific protocol so you can constantly stream and pull data from Dataverse. If you're using tools like Azure Data Studio or SSMS, this is the connection point you're using. It works great, it pulls data in real time, but it has a limitation. If you're pulling from one, maybe a few tables, and it's only about tens of thousands of records, TDS is great. But once you start moving into more complex relationships, that's going to be a lot of processing required for TDS. Also, what if you move from tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands to millions of data points? Once you get that many records, TDS is not going to be enough. And if you haven't noticed already, that guy looks like he's canoeing. But in seriousness, Microsoft even documents this limitation where the big one is after five minutes, this is gonna time out on you. Some people worry about if the TDS endpoint is secure. Are we giving too much data access to people? Let's see what Chris has to say. It's all running through Dataverse, so the security is enforced. So you're not gonna get more access to data than you normally would if you're accessing it through Power Apps UI or through any other tool that uses the APIs. Can you explain the differences to us linked to Azure Synapse, linked to Microsoft Fabric? The big kind of differences there is that with the Synapse Link Dataverse, there's a lot more setup and prerequisites required. You have to go and spin up a storage account. You have to then spin up a Synapse workspace. And then you have to ensure all the correct permissions are set up from a storage account perspective. So there's a lot of things that become kind of frustrating to deal with. The flip side is what the new Fabric Link it promises a much more smoother onboarding experience that doesn't require experience in Azure because it's going to create all of this stuff behind the scenes for you. A Microsoft managed data lake and it'll set up all these things like the appropriate shortcuts, a serverless a SQL endpoint. We've discussed high level how Azure Synapse Link is working, what resources it's creating in Azure, but what's actually happening behind the scenes? It's fascinating. When you come in here and click on a link to Azure Synapse and you get prompted here and you click new link, when you finish walking through this wizard, what's gonna happen is it's gonna take all of the tables you selected and Azure Synapse link is gonna put them in the Azure data lake. But here's what's bananas. It's gonna convert them to CSVs because these are gonna be much faster and more readable than having to go to the Dataverse TDS stream. Seriously, here's my Synapse workspace that I created. And then here is the data storage that came with it. And if we go down to containers, I have the one it made for my Dynamics environment. If I click that, here's the account I synced. And look, CSV files. Isn't that neat? So we've enabled track changes. They're flowing nicely into the Azure Data Lake. And then they can be consumed by Azure Synapse Analytics. And so your Power BI can now pull from these tables. Now this is all fine, but people who do this a lot report having things like lock issues on the tables. Sometimes there's timeouts during those syncs and you can't get access to your data. I know few solutions architects who've ever had to do this, but there's usually data integration experts who then set up some Azure Data Factory and then they take these CSVs, put them in a different SQL pool. So that way we never run into the issues I just mentioned. What are my thoughts on this? Gross. I, I don't want to have to do this. I didn't build my career around just doing ETL jobs. But luckily, there's a feature that lets you get around all this. When you configure your Azure, apps, Azure Synapse link for Dataverse, there's going to be a button here that says use Sparkpool for Delta Lake data conversion job. Delta Lake is fascinating. So here we have Azure Data Lake. Delta Lake, what it lets you do is it takes your CSVs 
and then it turns them into parquet files that are stored in Data Lake. What's a parquet file? It's a different type of file designed for large scale reporting and data processing. All of this may sound like a lot for a low coder to deal with, especially getting deep into Azure and setting up all the Azure Synapse Link items. Although there are great tutorials and it's not that hard, there's actually a solution to this as Chris said, Fabric. It will set this all up for you. However, there's one pretty big downside to Fabric that Chris will share. So, is there like a downside to that? The current limitations are that it is going to bring over all of your tables, which may be a lot. And when I mean all the tables that have change tracking enabled, and, and also something to be aware of is that once you flip that switch on, you can't go back the other way. It's going to clutter your data lake with all that extra information that you may not need. So this is where there's also a big difference between the Synapse link and the Fabric link is that mm -hmm. it's actually going to use your uh, Dataverse storage. So that's kind of a potentially be an upside and a downside at the same time, because as we know, Dataverse storage is not cheap by any means. Of course, uh -huh. I know there's there's efficiencies going on under the hood in terms of compression. So it's not going to be maybe the same storage footprint as your, your transactional storage inside of Dataverse. But still, it's not nothing. Big thanks to Chris Piasecki for doing this interview, walking us through it and answering a lot of my students' questions. Chris leads the Edmonton user group. If you have any questions around that or you need data integrations help, he's your person. Find him on LinkedIn. His and my information are in the description below. And have a great weekend. I recognize that me saying that only applies if you're watching this video on a Friday. But if you are watching on a Friday, you're probably thinking, oh man, this is my kind of video.